it was a congratulations email so that was really a moment of joy i was so happy when i read that and there was my whole pay structure and uh, what is the wage like and how many months and stuff so the contract and stuff right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another episode of toxigenesh in today's episode i'm going to tell you how i found my work term job in computer science i got into verifin which is the world's largest financial crime management software company i got in as a software developer i am going to be starting in the first week of september and i am so so excited i have been waiting for this for such a long time in this video i'm going to be answering most of the questions that you have most of the questions of you have about computer science about co-ops work terms how to find a job i will share with you the outreach methods that i have used to find the job and i will also include some advice some tips for you towards the end of the video so make sure you watch this video till the end if you're watching talks with janesh let's get started Also made a video on how to find co-op jobs link is in the description you can check that out as well now at this point of time finding a co-op job is going to be difficult if you are coming here new and then if you want to do in, uh, your degree in computer science it is definitely going to be challenging it is going to be difficult because of this whole covid thing the economy has been drastically affected in canada and so most businesses uh, most big companies have had uh, to shut down jobs have had to close down uh, their openings they are not opening uh, jobs anymore for students so it is definitely going to be challenging but it's not impossible uh, i have found a work term I got into Verifin and uh, if you try putting a little bit of effort uh, you can as well so in this video I'm going to tell you about uh, how the journey went I'm going to tell you in details everything I'm going to keep it super transparent before covid I would apply to so many jobs I was supposed to start my work term in the spring semester that is this semester that I'm studying right now is supposed to be working now the whole story is different I'll get into that in a little bit but uh, before covid I applied to so many jobs I got very many interviews as well and uh, Thankfully most of the interviews went well I got a few offers and I eventually chose to go with this is a huge company and uh, their company size is over 55000 employees so it is huge right now a normal person wouldn't uh, believe that covid can affect as well but covid happened and i lost my work term so i was in a huge state of depression because i got the notice a month before starting my work term i got an email saying that uh, we're going to have to postpone or defer your work term and cancel it temporarily but uh, so i was in a state of shock i got depressed and i'm not a person who plays video games but for one month i kept playing uh, this game gta 5 and i finished the whole game i'm super proud of that now but i do not know what i'm going to do now because uh, obviously everything that i had planned my whole degree was revolving around uh, this work term now because it is the summer there are not many courses available as well in the computer science department i think only a few first year courses are available so what i did was i registered for five elective courses that will eventually help me and i'm going to have to take them anyway so i registered for five elective courses and covid happened so the government is also uh, giving us $2000 in the form of this erb payment so i'm receiving that and that is good Uh, I'm able to put my time and energy into my books and as well as YouTube as well. So uh, that is one good thing that has happened. The semester started on May 11th, and 10 days into the semester, my brother and I were having a conversation. We were talking about YouTube and business ideas. So we would see how much income a YouTuber uh, on average makes. Now, obviously, when a person is starting out on YouTube, they don't make that much. They don't make anything at all. But we were just having a conversation, and we were just seeing, you know, different YouTube channels and stuff, and we're discussing different ideas. That's when he motivated and inspired me to start a YouTube channel. So what we did is we started a YouTube channel. Uh, we made it under a fake name, under a fake account, and we. compiled a video about inspiration we put music we put words and it was compiled very nicely everything was uh, perfectly done we put that video on the internet and in 2 days we saw the video had got 28 views so that really struck me 28 people took time out of the day to watch this video so uh, that really touched me and so that's when i decided that i'm going to start a youtube channel i'm going to talk about uh, newfoundland in canada and there are not much videos out there there's not much content about st johns about memorial university so that's when i started uh, to make videos about the jobs cost of living accommodations etc part time jobs and all all of the videos that you guys have been seeing so far thank you for that continue watching continue supporting 
So that's how the YouTube journey began. Now in this video that I'm going to play in a second, you're going to see I'm telling you about I have two interviews scheduled for my work term. I have two interviews already scheduled for my work term and both of the interviews are going to be done via video conferencing. I ended up taking neither of these two positions because I knew somewhere in my mind I wanted to get into Verifin. Now Verifin is a huge company started by the Brendan brothers and now it's running, it's playing in the millions. So I knew that I wanted to get into uh, Verifin, it, they pay good money, you get good experience as well and after graduation you have the opportunity to continue working at Verifin as well. So it was it was a very safe thing to do uh, but for some reason I was not getting an interview. I had waited for so long, I think it was about two months I had applied and two months in I still had not heard anything so I was nervous. I did not know what to do, time was passing by and I knew I had to do something. So I also got an interview from Bell. Now Bell, the job that I was getting at Bell was an implementation support specialist. Uh, this job mainly had to do uh, with hardware and you know dealing with customers. That is good, the money was also good but that is not my area of expertise. My area of expertise is programming, that is what I am inclined to and that is my passion. All of these experiences I would get at Verifin but I got an interview at Bell. So I also received an offer from Bell and what happened is with I ended up not taking Bell obviously because it was not something that uh, I was passionate about and just not something that I had in my mind that I wanted to do. I don't remember the exact day but at around 11 a.m. I got an email from uh, Verifin and the email was an invitation to uh, the interview. I was super excited. I contacted a few of my friends who have been working at Verifin who have done their work terms. I uh, asked them some advice, uh, what questions do they ask and just you know get, get some insight into how the interview is conducted. So that really helped me a lot. I got some great advice and that is what I implemented. Even the co-op advisor at Mumol University, I spoke to her and we also did some mock interviews. Uh, she really helped me out a lot. So uh, it was a huge preparation for this interview and when the interview did happen, it was it started like this and it was over like this. It was over in I think 30 minutes and I was so amazed. I was preparing for this for so many days for like these 30 minutes and when it did happen, it just didn't feel like it's happening, you know. It took me around 7 to 8 days to hear back from Verifin but uh, once I did, I was so, so nervous. I got an email, I did not want to open it. <laughs> I left it out there for, for I think a few hours and then when I opened it, I was so nervous. I did not know what, uh, the, what, what it's, it is going to be like. So what I did is I closed my eyes and I opened the email. It was a congratulations email so that was really a moment of joy. I was so happy when I read that and there was my whole pay structure and uh, what is the wage like and how many months and stuff. So the contract and stuff, right? It was a moment of satisfaction when I got that email. So that was the whole journey of how I found uh, my work term. I spent four months in finding a job and then uh, I lost that job because of COVID and I was extremely depressed. I don't even want to think of that again but after that uh, I again spent a few months on finding another job and then I found Verifin. I got into it and now I am super happy. I'm starting next month. The advice I would like to give you is if you want to pursue computer science or business or so anything that has a work terms, engineering has a few work terms, so you're going to need to apply to as many jobs as possible. There are a limited number of jobs and if you apply to only 10 jobs then your chances of getting a job is going to be very little. So you want to open yourself up to different opportunities, a variety of opportunities and apply to all sorts of uh, jobs. There is a saying that if someone offers you a job and you don't know how to do it, you should say yes and later on learn how to do it. You want to apply as, as many jobs as possible, I cannot stress it enough, even if uh, the title does not make sense to you, just apply. Later on you're going to be trained. You are a work term student, you are a co-op student so obviously they, no one's going to expect uh, professional quality of work from you. They're going to train you and then they're going to expect good work from you. So that's how it's going to be like. Now if you apply to 100 jobs, uh, for me I applied to more than 100 jobs, I think around 3 to 400 jobs in the whole uh, time, you would get a few interviews. Do not rely on those interviews. I'm telling you from experience, never ever rely on a few interviews uh, because if you rely on those interviews then you're going to be heavily dependent on them and you will not apply to more jobs. If for any reason you don't get the job after the interview, 
then again, you're going to be out and about hunting for jobs, right? So might as well continue your applying process, set out a schedule that you want to uh, apply for 10 jobs every single day. So make sure you apply to those 10 jobs, customize the resume, customize the cover letter and uh, you know, tailor it to that job's requirements. That is what uh, you're going to need to do. There are so many outreach methods as well. You can go on LinkedIn, Indeed, the company website, the university portal. Memorial University has a separate uh, job portal where you can apply and the university will then send out the resume to the company so uh, you can apply to the company's portal as well or the university's portal and uh, just keep applying to as many jobs as you can don't uh, it wouldn't say to be picky do not do not be picky at this point in time because this is uh, the time to be you know shaped you want to shape yourself up you want to uh, gain good exposure and good experience now I have received more than 200 messages on Instagram and Facebook from you guys asking me questions about this place now I obviously cannot get back to every one of you but I am trying trust me I am trying my best uh, for the people who have been speaking to already know that and what I'm gonna do though is build a course this is what I have in mind I'm gonna build a course for you that is going to give you step-by-step -step information step-by-step -step guidance uh, the process is going to be laid out for you of what you should do when you should do and everything that you need to do basically to come to Canada right from choosing the university choosing the program choosing the course applying your visa admission process everything is going to be there in the course and all you have to do is follow the process follow the steps one by one if you do that I take guarantee I personally take guarantee that you will get your visa you will be able to come to Canada and you will be able to live the life of your dreams now you can find information on YouTube for free but you're gonna have to spend hours days and months and at the end you're still not going to be satisfied and I, how do I know this I'm speaking from experience I've been there in your shoes and because I've been there I know how hard it is that is why that is the ultimate reason why I'm going to be building this course for you guys I'm going to be very clear and transparent this course is not going to be free there's going to be a very slight nominal amount but this amount you can literally make it up in your first day when you come here if you get a job on your first day of your work uh, you can literally make that amount just like that so the more than the amount it is the information it is the value that you're going to be getting agents are obviously not the best to go to because agents do say that they're going to give you a free service they're going to help you out for free but we both know there is no such thing as free lunch the agents are partnered with different universities around the world around different countries and they are in commission basis so normally they're going to encourage you to apply to universities where their cut is much higher and at the end you're going to be paying for their cut because your fees as an international student is going to be so much higher I know this because I've come through an agent as well I don't want to name them uh, just because it's going to defame them but they were literally forcing down uh, so many things on our throats and at one point they even said that it's mandatory it's compulsory when obviously it was not so uh, these unnecessary expenses like living on campus buying meal plans all these things you can live off campus and save so much more money you can cook your own food and save so much more money I think uh, like in this place at Mamoru University on campus fees is uh, around I think two thousand dollars twenty five to twenty six hundred dollars if you cook your own food you're going to be only spending around five say six hundred dollars at most in the span of four months so that is how it is you know if you go through an agent they're going to be making you uh, enroll yourself in such expensive programs which you are going to be paying and the only reason they do that is so that they can fill their own pockets but in this course it's going to be straight information information is going to be laid out and you can choose what you want there's going to be no pressure there's no hidden fees there's no hidden commissions so information is literally just put out there where you can decide what is best for you you want advice sure I can give advice uh, but there's no going to be no force the reason why I am building this course is because so many of you out there do not know what to do. So many of you have messaged me and in this course everything is going to be broken out in details for you where you don't have to look elsewhere. All you have to do is focus uh, down this road. You can either do it yourself or you can have someone who's done it already help you through it. Through this course I am going to be working with you. I will be giving you one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I will answer your questions every week. There will be one-on-one -on -one tutorials. There's going to be a whole separate video about uh, this course 
but just wanted to put this out there that this is something I'm working on. Ladies and gentlemen, if this interests you, put it in the comments, let me know. Now, right now, I'm just super excited to start my work term, which is going to be next month in the first week of September, and I cannot wait. Another effective piece of advice I would give is do community service, do community work, volunteering, because this is going to help you in building your personality, in gaining experience, gaining knowledge. If you don't have work experience, then the best way to gain uh, experience is through volunteering. You wouldn't necessarily be compensated with money, but you're going to be rewarded with experience, with knowledge, and you're going to be building yourself an identity. People around are going to get to know you. I remember when I hosted the 33rd Multicultural Show, two people reached out to me and gave me their business cards. Now, nothing much came off it, but you see how my business network expanded. So that can happen to you as well. Make sure that you're continuously volunteering. You're putting yourself out there in your free time. You do not want to watch movies, but you want to actually do something constructive, something effective that is helping the community, giving value to the community. And in return, in ways you cannot imagine you are going to be uh, receiving help from the community as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, then give it a huge thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I will see you in the next episode.